the Kimberly Clark Mickey Transgastric Jejunal Feeding Tube provides for simultaneous gastric decompression and drainage and delivery of enteral nutrition into the distal duodenum or proximal jejunum. Suggested endoscopic placement procedure. Place the patient in the supine position and insufflate the stomach with air. Transilluminate through the anterior abdominal wall to select a gastrostomy site that is free of major vessels, viscera, and scar tissue. Place a skin mark at the tube insertion site and define the gastropexy pattern by placing three skin marks equidistant from the tube insertion site and in a triangular configuration. Allow adequate distance approximately 2 cm between the insertion site and safety pexy placement so as to prevent interference of the anchor set and balloon once inflated. Attach a lure slip syringe containing 1 to 3 mL of sterile water or saline to the needle hub. Under endoscopic guidance, insert the preloaded safety pexy slotted needle with a single sharp thrust through one of the marked corners of the triangle until it is within the gastric lumen. The simultaneous return of air into the syringe and endoscopic visualization confirms correct intragastric position. After confirmation of correct position, release the suture strand and remove the syringe from the device. Bend the locking tab on the needle hub. Firmly push the inner hub into the outer hub until the locking mechanism clicks into place. This will dislodge the T-bar from the end of the needle and lock the inner stylet into position, blunting the needle. Withdraw the needle while continuing to gently pull the T-bar until it is flush against the gastric mucosa. Gently slide the suture lock down to the abdominal wall. Close the suture lock with the supplied hemostat until an audible click is heard, securing the suture. Repeat the procedure until all three devices have been inserted in the corners of the triangle. With the stomach still insufflated and in apposition to the abdominal wall, Identify the puncture site at the center of the gastropexy pattern. With endoscopic guidance, confirm that the site overlies the distal body of the stomach, below the costal margin and above the transverse colon. Insert the safety introducer needle into the gastric lumen directed toward the pylorus. The best angle of insertion is a 45 degree angle to the surface of the skin. Use endoscopic visualization to verify correct needle placement. Advance a guide wire through the introducer needle into the fundus of the stomach and confirm position. Remove the safety introducer needle, keeping the guide wire in place, and activate the safety collar. Slide the introducer needle safety collar down the needle shaft while removing the needle to prevent inadvertent needle stick. Using endoscopic visualization, grasp the guide wire with an atraumatic forceps and advance the guide wire through the pylorus into the proximal jejunum and 10 to 15 centimeters beyond the ligament of trites. Use the number 11 safety scalpel blade to create a small skin incision that extends alongside the guide wire, downward through the subcutaneous tissue and the fascia of the abdominal musculature. Apply water-soluble lubricant at incision site. Advance the serial dilator over the guide wire. Use a firm clockwise counterclockwise twisting motion to initiate advancement of the dilator sheath. Maintain a 45 degree angle to the skin while dilating so as not to kink the guide wire. While holding the serial dilator stationary, grasp the next dilator sleeve and with a slight clockwise counterclockwise twisting motion, advance the next dilator into the stoma tract. Slide the segment forward until a physical stop is felt. Advance the red color-coded sleeve through the stoma tract and into the stomach. Moisten the tip of the stoma measuring device with water-soluble lubricant. Remove the dilator, leaving the guide wire in place and place on a clean surface. Advance the stoma measuring device over the guide wire, through the stoma tract and into the stomach. Fill the lure slip syringe with 5 milliliters of sterile or distilled water and attach to the balloon port. Inflate the balloon. Pull the device toward the abdomen until the balloon rests against the inside of the stomach wall. Slide the plastic disc down to the abdomen and record the measurement proximal to the disc. Add an additional 4 to 5 millimeters to the measured shaft length to ensure a proper fit post tube placement. Record the final measurement. Remove the water in the balloon and the stoma measuring device, leaving the guide wire in place. Resume dilation by advancing the dilator over the guide wire, through the stoma tract, and into the stomach. Continue dilation until all dilator sleeves have been advanced. Twist the dilator hub to release the peel-away sheath from the dilator. 
Lubricate the exterior of the peel-away sheath with a water-soluble lubricant and advance the sheath through the tract and into the stomach. Remove the dilator, leaving the peel-away sheath in the stomach with the remainder securely maintaining position through the tract and exiting the stoma site. Select the appropriate Kimberly-Clark Mickey low-profile transgastric jejunal tube. Using the lure slip syringe contained in the kit, inflate the balloon with 5 ml sterile or distilled water through the balloon port. Remove the syringe and verify balloon integrity by gently squeezing the balloon to check for leaks. Visually inspect the balloon to verify symmetry. Insert the introducer cannula into the jejunal port until the hub is in contact with the jejunal feeding port and the introducer cannula is clearly visible inside the tube. The introducer cannula opens the one-way valve and protects it from damage by the guide wire. Reinsert the syringe and remove all the water from the balloon. Use a catheter tip syringe and flush water through both the jejunal and gastric ports to verify patency. Advance the tube over the guide wire until the proximal end of the guide wire exits the introducer cannula. Peel the sheath down to skin level. Hold the introducer hub and jejunal feeding port while advancing the tube into the stomach. After the tube has been advanced through the peel-away sheath and is in position in the stomach, peel the sheath away from the tube. Using endoscopic guidance, grasp the suture loop or the tip of the tube with atraumatic forceps. Advance the tube through the pylorus and upper duodenum. Continue to advance the tube using the forceps until the tip is positioned 10 to 15 centimeters beyond the ligament of trites and the balloon is in the stomach. Release the tube and withdraw the endoscope and forceps in tandem, leaving the tube in place. Using a lure slip syringe, inflate the balloon. Remove the guide wire through the introducer cannula while holding the cannula in position. Remove the introducer cannula. Verify proper tube placement and ensure the tube is not looped within the stomach or small bowel.